Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this meeting of the Cabinet. The meeting is being live streamed to the Cheltenham Borough Council YouTube channel and recorded for training purposes. Very much welcome um, to members of the public um, and, watch it, and also those who are watching. What I need to say is, is that if you make a representation to the meeting, you are consenting to the use of those sound recordings for broadcasting and training purposes. Um, also to say that please note that no fire, fire alarm tested um, testing is expected today. So if the alarm does sound, we should all immediately make our way to the nearest fire exit, which I'm not going to do an airline point to. I think you can all see where they are. Um, I do have apologies tonight for councillors Klukas, Collins and Horwood. Are there any declarations of interest from anybody? No? Thank you very much. We've got the minutes of the last meeting on pages 5 to 12 of the report. Are there any comments that anybody wishes to make on those minutes? If I could see a show of hands, please, to agree those minutes. And any abstentions? Councillor Atherston, I think you were not here, weren't you? Hence your abstention. So that leads us on to agenda item four, which is public and member questions. The two public questions have been received, one from Mr. JJ Potofici, who is not here, so his question has been answered and therefore there will be no supplementary. And then we have Ms. Claire Dovey. If you'd like to come forward, um, I'm guessing you've got a supplementary question. <laughs> could, could I ask, will you take your question that you've been that was given and the answer supplied, will you take that as read and then just ask your supplementary? Thank you. The floor's yours. Councillor Dobie, thank you for your response to our question. <clears throat> we appreciate the time you have taken into addressing our issues we raised and note the positive way in which you have taken our question. We acknowledge the improvements on residents' health, biodiversity and the climate crisis the Council has made on both its Wild Gloucestershire campaign and also by moving to a 50% reduction in spraying glyphosate across our streets, parks and playgrounds. We welcome the leadership Cheltenham Borough Council has shown in its proposed improvements to stop cutting grass around trees and the consequent removal to the need for spraying. We also welcome the opportunity, working with officers, Councillor Doby and any other councillors to further develop strategy and seek to address the challenges we all face in phasing out the use of glyphosate herbicide across the borough. This shows an incredible duty of care to environment, animals and our residents. Pesticide-free Cheltenham would like to accept your offer to work in partnership with you on a strategy to help engage the public, private landowners, businesses on the reduction and ultimate stop of use of pesticides across Cheltenham. We work closely with the PAN, the Pesticide Action Network, who have multiple case studies on councils who have saved money by going pesticide free, such as Hackney, who saved £10,000 last year, and Kingston, who saved an incredible £44,000 in their first year of going pesticide free. Having spoken to the PAN on your point about the Isle of Wight, they did indeed get their strategy and campaign wrong, as they went pesti pesticide free pretty much overnight. There was little consultation and no real phased approach with their residents. We urge you to look closer to home, Bath for example. There is so much best practice out there. With over 20 successful pesticide free towns, we would like to work with you on Cheltenham becoming a role model for others. So my supplementary question is, would CBC commit to set up a regular pesticide free forum and meet before the end of June with preliminary drafting of the forum's terms of reference. Thank you. Thank you for your supplementary, Claire, and also I welcome your presence here and also the presence of Pesticide Free Cheltenham. And uh, it's very clear, as I think we discussed a minute ago, indeed, that we're on the same side here, re really, in trying to get to that the en end point. But I note also that you have emphasised, in my opinion, quite correctly, that a phased approach is, is the right way forward. 
Uh, in, in that context, indeed, I, I do welcome the opportunity to meet with you and, and your group, uh, uh, with my, my senior officer also there. And uh, I would like to do it as soon as pr practically possible. As I've indicated, I may be taking some leave shortly, but if at all possible, it will be uh, before the end of this month, but certainly early in, in the next month. And I trust that will be acceptable to you. Thank you. Thank you. That leads us now on to, so that's all the public questions um, and member questions that we've had for today and we've not received any petitions. And thank you, Ms. Dovey, for coming and, and speaking to us. So that leads us now on to the Food Service Safety Plan. Um, which is the report of Cabinet Councillor Horwood, who in his absence today, what he's done is he sent me words of his in, for his introduction to this report that I will read out to Cabinet now. Cabinet colleagues, I'm presenting this report on behalf of Councillor, colleague, Councillor Horwood, who is on leave and who wanted me to mention for complete transparency that his wife works for the UK Health Security Agency, which is referred to in the report. In the area of food safety, Cheltenham Borough Council operates within a strict framework of British law, which I'm pleased to say is still complying with high European food safety standards, at least for now. This work covers a wide variety of food businesses and they paint an interesting picture. There are 1,102 registered food businesses in Cheltenham this year, which is a little down on last year's total of 1,113. I'm happy to report that the number of restaurants and cafes is up from 280 to 294, although the number of takeaways is down from 111 to 101, and the number of pubs and clubs providing food is down 1 to 299. The number of supermarkets selling food is up from 32 to 33, while the number of small retailers doing the same is down 2 to 124. There were 66 schools and colleges providing food and 34 guest houses doing the same is down to 124. Sorry, that's my fault. The, 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 there were 66 schools and colleges providing food and 34 guest houses both of which are unchanged, that number. The number of food manufacturers, packers, distributors and importers or exporters was down a little from 36 to 31. And these numbers may represent some long-term trends in food business, but also short-term fluctuations as some businesses close or merge and others open. Overall, they still paint a picture of the local sector that is very healthy in both senses of the word. As a council, we inspect food premises, we investigate complaints and provide advice to festivals and events. We administer the food hygiene rating system locally and we proactively visit new businesses. We also exercise important powers in relation to infectious disease control, covering areas such as food poisoning, outbreaks and waterborne diseases, following standard procedures set out by the UK Health Security Agency. We collect food samples and pass them to the specialist lab at the Public Analyst Scientific Services in Wolverhampton and at the um, UK HSA. We take a risk-based approach that we hope isn't burdensome to the well-run businesses that we want to thrive in Cheltenham. So we will continue to focus on re our resources on the highest risk food activities and the food businesses with the poorest records with the aim of constantly improving standards across Cheltenham. Although the COVID recovery plan has now finished, there are some elements of it that still apply to food safety and government is currently consulting on an improved permanent system which might, for instance, include more flexibility in the methods of techniques of official controls that can be used to risk rate food establishments and allow some officers who do not hold a suitable qualification for food hygiene to undertake some tasks as long as they are competent to do so. We hope government won't be lowering standards or allowing loopholes to creep into the system. As a council, I would like to emphasise that we remain committed to the highest possible standards of food safety 
and I'm happy to commend this report to Cabinet. If any Cabinet members got any questions, please do shout. Comments welcome as well. Thank you, Leader. Um, while on the face of it, this report might not seem like the most exciting thing that we've ever discussed in this chamber, actually, when you think about the consequences, if this piece of work every year, which I suspect is fairly substantial, if it didn't take place, when you walk in to get your fish and chips on a Friday night, when you go out for a meal with your, your wife and your children, your husband and your children, your grandparents, your uncles and your aunts, your cousins, um, and you can't be certain that you're not going to get food poisoning, um, then the consequences of this work not happening could be pretty dire. And anyone who's had food poisoning um, from eating out, um, as I have in the past, uh, will, will know what those consequences are, and it can be extremely serious. Um, so I think it's, it's really reassuring to know that we're taking uh, a really thorough approach to this matter in general. Um, and, and it does fill me with confidence that um, when I'm strolling home from the pub on a Friday evening or a Thursday and I pop in to get something on my way home because it's a bit late to make myself... Uh, some food after I've had a long day followed by a bit of social time that actually the chances of me getting food poisoning from a Cheltenham establishment are hopefully pretty low and our hospitality industry that we have here um, thrives in a way that uh, I suspect hospitality industry is not um, thriving in across the country um, and I think it's something that we can be very proud of and I think we can be proud of the work that this council does to help that industry thrive. Councillor Jeffries. Yeah, and it's in my vein. Uh, I agree with what Councillor Rickinson says there. It, it always amazes me. It comes around every year, this report, and I sort of, sort of forget over that 12 month period, actually, the depth and breadth of the amount of work that this council does supporting these um, organisations and companies. And, and you listen to all the stats there, and it's, it's staggering. Um, so, yeah, I know that if Martin was here, and I'm hoping I don't beat you too easily, that I'm sure he'd put on record our thanks to the relevant officers that put all the, the grunt in day in, day out. Um, and it's nice to see. The one thing I've noticed over the last 12 months, actually, I thought I'd just pop into this meeting, actually, is the Borough Council's media team are actually highlighting more and more some of the interactions on, under the food safety, trying to get more awareness for people on social media and things, which I thought was quite really a nice turn. Uh, supporting those businesses when they've been awarded their food rate, rating scheme. So just want to uh, you know, recognise the fact that the Borough Council are trying to support the industry in a different way rather than just, well, as you can read for this report. Thank you, Nina. If there's no other member, the, the, the one comment I was going to pick up on is actually what you do see is it's where people have been given a five-star rating, they're really proud of it. And, and the more that we can encourage that and encourage people to, to put up those signs in their window, you know, hopefully every single one of our venues will get to um, a rating of, of five. And yes, indeed, my thanks to the officers who do this day in, day out um, for pulling the report together. If I could see a show of hands for approval of the report, please. That's unanimous. Thank you very much. So... The other report tonight is the report of the Cabinet Member for Cabinet, um, Safe Communities and Safeties, and she has given her apologies for, for tonight. She also has written some words for me to read on her behalf. So the Household Support Fund is a really important fund for us, um, and so this household support is channelled to Cheltenham through the Gloucestershire County Council. It's not money that we receive directly. But what we do do is, together with our local partner organisations, we work through how we can host or how we can best support our children, pensioners and families who need that extra help. They, we met on the 18th of May and I'm delighted that our partners confirmed that their willingness to be part of the programme. This will be the third tranche of funding received in the last 12 months. And as you can see from the report, we will continue to support people with their energy costs together with the Food Network, Household Essentials and Children's Centres, CCP and Unstoppable, in addition, increased advice capacity through the Citizens Advice Bureau will be supported. Uh, is there any member who would like to make a comment on this report? Councillor Atherston. Thank you, Leader. Yeah, in reading the report, it really does show um, how many amazing um, local community groups we have in Cheltenham um, and are there 
um, in the communities, supporting residents through um, you know, some really, really tough times recently, both with coming out of the pandemic and the cost of living crisis. And it's really, really great that we're able to um, continue to work with these brilliant organisations throughout Cheltenham um, and supporting them in um, providing, you know, really, really urgent necessities, whether that's heating, food, clothing, um, for, for residents that are most in need. So, um, yeah, I think it's a bit of a shout out to all those community organisations for doing such a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Jeffries. Yeah, I'm going to do the same again and agree with my colleague. It, it, it is staggering, again. I mean, just look, I'm just looking for the report of what they were doing last, last time round, uh, the last set of funding. 1,170 individuals received Fuel Bank Foundation for vouchers for fuel. That's a shocking indictment of our, of our society. And where would these people be without this support? And again, it's not us. We're just channeling the funds through and we're making it, you know, we're just enabling, if you like. Um, each and every one of these organisations, the charitable organisations or community organisations, unbelievable. You know, so we've got the state doing the, the, the support through um, the benefit system, but actually, I reckon if you quantified that, it'd be probably equal to what the state provides. So, um, again, a shout out to all of our community organisations. It's absolutely staggering the amount of residents across our town that are supported by the organisations. So, yeah, thank you. Right, Councillor Ashton. Thank you, Nina. I can't see any other member indicating, so can I see a show of hands, please, to approve this? That's again a unanimous decision. Thank you very much. That, that leads us on now to the briefing session. So if I, I'll go to my right, Councillor Lewis, is there anything? Thank you, Leader. I just want to take this opportunity, as unfortunately I won't be at Council next week. I am in Cambridge, but I do want to really highlight this really exciting event we've got coming up. So we've got the Cheltenham Zero Sustainable Travel Showcase, which sounds exciting. They're talking about buses, they're talking about EV vehicles, they're talking about cycle infrastructure. If you are interested in sustainable travel in Gloucestershire, they've got so many big names, including Cleveland Motors, Think Travel, Dooku and Stagecoach, who will be a fascinating group of people to speak to on this topic. And of course, Cheltenham Borough Council will be there talking about the really exciting stuff we're doing from the Cycle Hub through to our work with local cycle campaigners. It's Tuesday, the 27th of June. You can get some free tickets on Eventbrite. So if anyone has any exciting plans for the morning of Tuesday, 27th of June, cancel them because you're going to this. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Councillor Lewis. Councillor Wilkinson. Yeah, th thank you. A few things. Um, first thing uh, is a really positive news story. We launched a few weeks ago uh, the Feed Cheltenham Leisure Pass, um, which enables uh, people who are registered at food banks um, to get a pass uh, to go to uh, Leisure At and take part in free swimming sessions, free gym sessions, free exercise classes and free soft play for families. Um, and I'm pleased to say the first uh, families have been taking up that offer and uh, we've got more than a dozen people who have registered for the Feed Cheltenham Pass. I think that's really positive. These are people who otherwise um, might not be able to go and take part in exercise um, because of, uh, you know, the dire financial situation that a lot of families in Cheltenham have found themselves in. Um, the, the deal does cover up to 600 families, so I'd encourage anyone uh, who is registered with the food bank and, and would like to take advantage um, to uh, chat to the food bank managers and, um, uh, and get registered. Uh, it's a, a really positive scheme that we're able to put on, and I think we can all be proud of that. Um, secondly, thank you to uh, Cheltenham Open Studios, and particularly uh, Nikki Whitfield, who um, ran the launch event uh, at the Ritual Coffee Roasters last Friday uh, evening. Um, apparently there are more than 200 artists uh, displaying their art uh, in various places, from their bedrooms to their outhouses, uh, to um, art galleries uh, and shops all over Cheltenham. And I would commend everyone who's watching and everyone in the gallery uh, to go around and, and tour those premises. There's some really lovely art on, on display. Um, next, uh, the Cheltenham Science Festival was last week, and I was pleased to attend the launch of the Data Face scheme, which is sponsored by by uh, this council, uh, among others, uh, and it's a really important scheme to equip young people in Cheltenham with the skills to use data um, and digital uh, in really creative ways uh, so they've got uh, marketable skills for the job market of the future. Uh, I was also pleased to attend 
the uh, launch of the Love Food Hub in Charlton Kings. Nadine and Amy are doing uh, really good work there to find um, ways to sustainably offer meals to local people who might be struggling. Um, last week was the latest Sinam event. Um, and for those who have been to the Sinam events before, you'll know how fascinating and sometimes confusing they can be. Uh, this one was on a subject very close to one of this council's key priorities. Uh, it was about um, using cybersecurity to solve the climate change problems that we all experience uh, and that uh, are facing this town and the rest of the world. Uh, and uh, speakers included people from Ecotricity and various defence organisations. Um, absolutely fascinating evening. Uh, and uh, finally, I'd like to place on the formal record uh, this council's congratulations uh, to Cheltenham resident Mike Newby, um, who became the world shin-kicking champion a couple of weeks ago. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Doby. Uh, yes, uh, talking of uh, climate change, I believe I should brief in as the Cabinet Member for Parks. Some news today that hundreds of fish have unfortunately died in Pitville Park Lake due to a combination of the hot weather and also the recent flash floods from the thunderstorms which have squashed pollutants off roads and so on into the lake. So um, it, oxygen levels as measured today are indeed low but we are taking action as a council as you would expect and there are oxygenators in the water which are being switched on for longer periods than is, is normal and we've already seen fish moving towards them we put out some, some notices to warn people about what's, what's going on there, and of course we're cleaning up after the fish. But on a more positive note, to, to finish on that story, uh, it's worth noting that uh, normally uh, Pitville Lake is a very healthy lake for fish, and uh, we've proven that because we had a survey done of the fish, and secondly, we can prove it by the fact that we've now got otters in Pitville Lake, on, on the island in Pitville Lake, and they don't go to lakes if there's nothing for them to eat. So, and they haven't left. So I'm confident that uh, the ecology of the lake will be restored to what it was before. But it is a sign of the time, and I'm sure it is linked in ultimately to climate change, actually. Or it can be. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dobie. Councillor Jeffries. I have nothing, nothing as exciting as otters and shin kicking, uh, leader. Um, no, the, finance, uh, the property team are obviously beaming away on all of our assets for us. Um, just to make colleagues aware that the financial outturn, the finance team have been working and closing down the position from that budget, and we'll have a report uh, next month for you all to consider for the outturn. Thank you. Councillor Atherstone. Uh, thank you, Leader. Yeah, I'd just like to say that um, I've been really impressed seeing the, um, the videos that have been um, produced by Cheltenham Borough Homes, um, I believe in partnership with um, Cheltenham Borough Council's comms team, breaking down the housing revenue account business plan, which perhaps in the olden days was probably a Word document, and in recent years it's become a very beautiful sort of PDF that is much more easier to understand. But the fact that we've now moved into um, animated video, I think is great. Because obviously it's a lot more digestible to a much more, uh, wider audience, breaking it down into all of our key objectives. So whether that's um, the aims around sustainable homes and building new sustainable homes, whether that's about stronger, more resilient communities um, or financially fit um, and building to the future. So it's just really, Really, it's really, yeah, the fact if you're on social media or if you're online, that you're able to understand what could be quite a technical document, perhaps, um, in a very digestible format. So well done to the CBH and CBC teams. Thank you. Just a brief one from, from me to say that tomorrow is quite an important anniversary date, and I did a short video um, clip to support, um, the, to, to remember the... the um, this will be the sixth anniversary of the Grenfell Towers, where 72 people lost their lives. I think masses of organisations have learned from that, from, from that disaster. And not least, I mean, we don't have cladding on, on many, many of our buildings that, that, that would have caused that problem. But it doesn't alter the fact that, you know, CBH work very closely with their tenants to provide, make sure that the, the fire, health and safety in terms of fire, etc., is all adhered to. But I just thought it was meant worth um, reflecting on the fact that it is the sixth anniversary of that dreadful tra tragedy. 
That moves us on to Cabinet members' decisions since the last meeting, of which there are four. Um, in the absence of Councillor Klukas, I will report that she allocated the um, coronation funding grants, which was all very exciting, with lots and lots of activities across the town. It's one of the, one of the nice things that we get to do, is make a very small pot of money go a very long way for our communities. Um, I did a very exciting one that most people wouldn't see as exciting, but I find it quite interesting, is that we, um, the government are out on consultation on the infrastructure levy. And it's a technical consultation, um, largely done by officers, but because I, I'm interested in things like that, I took the trouble to read it and make the decision. Um, the next decision was that of Cabinet Member for Waste and Recycling, Councillor Dovey. Uh, thank you, Leader. I was very pleased to approve the uh, purchase of these uh, three vehicles, which uh, were actually pre-approved as part of uh, CBC's continuing programme to renew its specialised waste and recycling fleet. But I'd nevertheless like to take time to highlight that these are a further three electric vehicles, joining ones that we already purchased last year. Uh, we as a council are committed to reducing the CO2 footprint of our waste and recycling fleet and this is an example of steps towards that end. Thank you, Councillor Dobie. Councillor Jeffries, yours is the final decision of this month. Thank you, Leader. Yes, I accepted the tender uh, with, for the uh, successful contractor to provide works um, for our council owned properties. This is particularly the Cornish type properties. And obviously, all the tenders were received, analysed and evaluated, and uh, after waiting for all that documentation, I then signed off that tender. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Members. There is just as a final agenda item for the main, uh, before we have to go into exempt session, is there is a briefing note, which isn't for discussion, but it's, in, it's for information on the Health and Safety Service update for this year. That then leads us into, that's the end of um, the business of this meeting um, in public session. We then have to move into um, the Local Government Act 1972 um, exec minutes. And they were the, as, as just for the benefit of, of those in the public gallery, you'll remember last time we had to say that we had a paper that we discussed that had to be an exempt session. This is just the minutes that we will be approving. But nevertheless, I have to read out. The Cabinet's recommended to approve the following resolution, that in accordance with Section 100A4, the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting for the remaining agenda items, as it is likely that in view of the nature of the business to be transacted or the nature of the proceedings, if members of the public are present, there will be disclosed to them exempt information as defined in paragraph 5 Part 1, Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 1972. Namely, Paragraph 5, information in respect of which a claim to legal professional privilege could be maintained in legal proceedings. And therefore, could I ask the members of the public please to leave the meeting? Thank you very much.